أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد النور المبين وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين ورضي الله عن أزواجه وأصحابه وأحبابه وأتباعه والتابعين وعنا معهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين أما بعد فالسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الله so it's nice to I've seen Yusuf and uh, Dr. Chohan both in Medina just last week at the Medina of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it's nice to see them again here and I'm sure they brought many blessings back with them to you. Balancing dunya and akhirah has always been a difficult thing. Dunya is present. Shuhud, alam shuhud. Akhirah, alam ghayb. Unseen. And people are usually attracted to that which they have shuhud of witness. Something they don't witness, ghayb. They turn it into, if they like it, into a rational negotiation. So they, all right, we will resort to believe in it. But it's not there. And that's why Al-Quran Al-Kareem tried to give us a fiqh of awlawiyat, a fiqh of priorities. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alif Lam Mim Thalikal Kitab La Raib Fihi Hudalil Muttaqeen Alladina Yuminuna Bil Raib Then Wamimma Razaknahom. Now that's Shuhud. You have it. You have your rizq. You see it. So in this ayah you see Allah puts alam al-ghayb wa alam al-shuhud and he prioritizes al-ghayb before shuhud so you're not veiled or you're not fooled. Alladheena yu'minuna bil-ghayb first and foremost they see the ghayb more than they see the shuhud. In fact the ghayb is shuhud. They are in witnessing of the ghayb and therefore if they witness the ghayb it's easy to give from the dunya or even the whole dunya. But if you don't witness the ghayb, there is no way you can give any, the whole dunya let, or part of the dunya, let alone the whole dunya. That's why we call the shaheed, shaheed. Why do we call the shaheed, shaheed? لِأَنَّهُ shahid, Because he witnesses. Witnesses what? al ghayb Witnesses, Al Ghaib, you remember, Fi Mu'min Al Yaseen, when they gave him the last ultimatum, Habibun Najjar, according to some of the Mufassirin, and then, Qala inni amantu bi rabbikum fasma'un. They gave him a choice between their shuhud and his shuhud. He was already witnessing the Akhirah. Wal Iman bil Ghaib. Their shuhud is a dunya. They told him, look, we don't recognize what you witness. We want you to recognize what we witness. He then made the choice. Qala inni amantu bi rabbikum fasma'oon. And that's when they killed him. Allah immediately said, obviously, in the ayah after that, Qila dukhulil jannah. Immediately. Qila dkhulil jannah. He was told, please enter jannah. Now he witnesses. Now he's shaheed. The ghaib to me and you is no longer ghaib to him. It is a alam shuhud. 
It's a world that he witnesses. It's not something that it is not seen. It is something that is very seen. Immediately he says, I wish they can witness what I'm witnessing. What are you witnessing? I am already in this instantaneous second, I am already among the uh, people who received the maghfirah of Allah. Not only that, and he gave me such honors. For this balance is difficult. And that's why Al Quran Al Karim tried to give us. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وابتغي فيما آتاك الله الدار الآخرة Seek in that which Allah has given you the hereafter يعني what? But Allah does not say I know we translated the hereafter Allah uses الدار الآخرة الدار means the home الآخرة means the latter home the everlasting home the permanent home. As if the ayah is saying, seek in what Allah has given you. What has he given you? Health, knowledge, wealth. What has he given you? Whatever he has given you. Time. Seek in what Allah has given you. Your home in the next, in the, the latter home, the permanent home. Then he tells you, so you don't say, so what do I, I don't do anything in this dunya? He says, وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا Don't forget your share in the dunya. أَحْسِن وَأَحْسِن كَمَا أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكَ Do good just like Allah has done good to you. So that this way we don't lose the direction. You know, oftentimes the issue is a lost direction. Lost. Why lost? Why do people lose themselves or lose their direction or don't know where they're going. The secret is two words in the Quran only. Nasullaha fanasiyahum. They forgot Allah, Allah made them for Allah forgot about them. Nasullaha fa ansahum and fusahum another ayah. They forgot about Allah, Allah made them forget about themselves. Meaning they forgot about their priorities. They forgot about who they are. They forgot about what should they do. They're lost. Why? Because they forgot Allah Ta'ala. Now don't tell me that, well, I'm praying and I am doing my dhikr and I am doing this. Lots of people are praying in a state of forgetfulness of Allah. Lots of people, they do istighfar and their heart is in absolute occupation with other than Allah. Lots of people, their tongue, they praise Allah and heart is busy with the creation of Allah. The presence with Allah definitively brings illumination to the heart. But the presence is not a presence of a tongue or a presence of a thought only or a presence of the occupation of the body. It's a wholesome approach. And the reason for this is that you know, this temporary dunya is no matter how long it lasts, it's temporary. Well, because everything gives you from what it has. Yani everything gives you, like the Arab poet says, وَكُلُّ إِنَاءٍ بِالَّذِي فِيهِ يَنْضَحُ Every pot brings you what it has. You, if you have a big pot with rice, it's not going to give you meat. You, you can ask for meat all you want. You're going to get rice. If the pot has meat only, all it's going to give you is meat. Every pot brings what it has. But this poetry is on something else. It's on the raw material of the human being. Huh? If your raw material are good, all you can give is good. If your raw material are not good, you're not going to give good. It has now, you have to nurture to become nature. It's a difficult process. That's a terbia process. Takes 10, 20, 30, 40, and sometimes even 50, and it doesn't even happen. So much nurture to become nature. Not easy. Versus those who have it, then they can always give. Everyone reflects their essence. Everyone brings that which they have. 
The reason I'm saying this is because you have two things. You have Darul Dunya wa Darul Akhirah. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Hawil ma'had dunya. Try with this dunya. All dunya can give you is dunya. It cannot give you happiness of the Akhirah. It's not part of the ingredients of it. Dunya can give you all these things that it has, and lots of it, it has obviously change. It has up becomes down, down becomes up, but no one stays up, everyone goes down eventually. You, no matter who you are, and no matter how comfortable your surroundings are, and no matter how beautiful you are, you're not going to stay here. You're all going to go. It's a fact of dunya. The strong never remains strong in the dunya. And the wealthy never remains wealthy in the dunya. And the healthy never remains healthy in the dunya. In fact, when someone is on their deathbed, they lose everything even before they die. Even their name becomes lost once they die. They don't call him by his name. They say, where's the body now? His name is Jamal or Ahmed or Mahmoud. He just died, just died, just a second ago. They don't call him now. He just lost his name too. They say, where's the body? What happened to Jamal? What happened to Fulan? What happened to Fulan? Ah, it's gone. Don't worry about this. Oh, that's why Al Ma'arri, as a Syrian philosopher and poet from Ma'arat al Nu'man, he has one line of poetry where he used to say, he says, Ta'abun kullu al hayat. Life is very tiring. You get from one thing, you get over one problem, you get a bigger problem. One problem, you get it. He says, min raghiban I'm amazed by those who even are rushing just for the dunya. That's why the Quran comes and tells you what? Live your dunya, but don't just live dunya for dunya. Otherwise, you'll be, you'll ve you're veiled by the alam of shuhud from what you witness, from the alam of ghaib, which is the everlasting, and you're seeking happiness and permanence in this dunya. These two ingredients, dunya doesn't have them. No permanence and no happiness except conditional happiness now. If you infuse the akhirah and the dunya, you have to bring the other one, infuse it in the dunya, now it gives you happiness. And that's why Allah sent the messengers and that's why Allah Ta'ala sent the Anbiya alayhim salatu wassalam and that's why Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala sent, uh, sent our Rasul Sallallahu Ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa azwaji wa sallam. Why? So he can be the window for your soul while you are in this dunya. Hence Allah described him by saying وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ So that becomes your sort of breathing space that becomes your permanence if you want to say that becomes your happiness and that's why al quran al kareem came and focused on a concept in that we don't usually talk about which is al farah al farah means being happy farah means being happy The reason I am saying all these things is because sometimes we think we have a difficult life. Uh, things are not easy, etc. But when you look at the life of the Sahaba radiallahu anhu, and the life of the people, life is relative. It's a relative thing. There's always going to be, what do you think? It's, if you're looking for permanence or happiness everlastingly, you have the wrong address. It's the Akhirah, not here. That's why you see As-Sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhum wa ardahum, they took this concept, al-farah, which Allah ta'ala said in the Quran al-Kareem, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, qul bi fadli Allahi wa bi rahmatihi, fa bi thalika fal yafrahu huwa khayrum mimma yajma'oon, fi Surah Yunus. 
Tell them, Ya Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa azwajihi wa ashabihi wa sallam. Tell them, bifadlillah, they wish for the grace of Allah and for the rahmah, the mercies of Allah. That's what they should be happy for. Huwa khayrun mimma yajma'oon. It is much better. The rahmah of Allah is much better of what they yajma'oon, what they collect. What are they collecting? Whatever they're collecting in the dunya. And every, since dunya is perishable, everything you collect in the dunya is also perishable. And Allah Ta'ala is putting that notion there. He says, Huwa khayrun mimma yajma'oon. That happiness is much better than what they collect. Whatever they collect. The only thing is then that farah or that happiness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His mercy and His fadl. And among the greatest mercies is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, a lot of people talk, in, even in the day, yani in the day of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they've talked about different kinds of happiness. Yani, for example, Al Quran al Kareem says فرح المخلفون بمقعدهم خلاف رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم some sahaba some people were with the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم needed them because happiness of sayyidina رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم was not sitting idle on the sides of the dunya collecting the perishables of the dunya that was not the mission of رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم but the mission can be exemplified by something you all know the year of sadness or what the, some of the ulama of Sira call Amul Huzn, year of sorrow. And that's the year towards the end of the Meccan phase when Sayyiduna Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lost two very important people to him. Number one, our, our honorable mother, as Sayyida Khadijatul Kubra, radiyallahu anha wa ardaha. Right? He lost Sayyida Khadija and he lost his uncle Abu Talib. Both of them back to back. And those two figures, as you all know, were so central in a da'wah. Not central by talk. No, no. That they, these people were not people who talk the talk. Those people were not people who just said, we are with you. Huh? Like and when, the, when things come right, they say, I have to bail out. I got to do other things. Huh? Sayyidina Ali allegedly says, I don't want you to do nadba. I don't want you to cry after on me after I die. And when I needed you most, you were never there. Huh? These two people passed away in the same time almost, weeks apart. السيدة خديجة أم المؤمنين وأبو طالب عام الحزن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم was described as very sad that year so that it became the year of sorrow what does he decide to do صلى الله عليه وسلم does this hardship the, the people in Mecca are killing his companions persecuting his companions uh, torturing his companions after 13 years almost at the end of the 13 years in Mecca only tens of people, yani less than a hundred people believed in him, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. وَهُوَ سَيِّدُ الْخَلْقِ And he was not sleeping. Allah commanded him to say, قُمِ اللَّيْلَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا Ya Rasulullah, stand up the whole night except just a little of it. There is no time to sleep today anymore. There are some ulama of the seerah, they say when the ayah was revealed, اقرأ or Ya أَيُّهَا المدثر. And Nabi ﷺ went to Khadija and told her, she told him, don't you want to take some sleep? He told her, allegedly, لَقَدْ مَضَى عَهْدُ النَّوْمِ يَا Khadija." The time for sleeping is over now. Now is the time for work. So he ﷺ, day and night, is in da'wah, where people are calling him names, persecuting his companions, killing them, confiscating their properties and this. And eventually the most dearest and nearest to him, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi have died. And not only that, his children, he buried them one after the other. If you want to talk about difficulties, because we are easily stressed today. Something happens and we are stressed. Yeah, put yourself in the shoes of 
someone you should love and you love. Before he was born, he lost his father. Before he was born. After he was born, he lost his mother. Then he lost his grandfather. Then he announced his message. He starts losing, losing the very few people who believed in him. Very few, tens of people. Most of them were slaves and poor, poor people and women. Most, the vast majority of them. That's why Quraysh was laughing. <laughs> they told him. Who follow you are the most insignificant in society. Who cares? They're not gonna, they're slaves and they're women and they're poor people. Most of them. And then the very people who cared about him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, genuinely, and believed in his da'wah, genuinely, because they were people who witnessed the ghayb, like a Sayyidah Khadija. When he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, came and told her that I'm commissioned to deliver the message, she did not ask him, but what's going to happen to my millions? What, what will Quraysh do? Will they take our money? What's going to happen to our children? Are you sure that you saw Jibreel? Are you sure you didn't see something else? Are you sure of what you're talking? Are you okay? La wallah. La wallah. Sayyid Aisha said to Sayyid Imam al-Bukhari, O Muslim, when the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to her and told Khadija, I'm commissioned now to deliver the message and, and all these things, she told him, Kalla wallahi la yukhzika Allahu abada. No way Allah will ever let you down, Ya Rasulullah. You don't know men by their shakil, by their looks. Men, and in that sense, women are known by the principles they embody in life. Who oh, shakil is what? Who oh, Abu Jahl had a shakil, oh, Abu Lahab had a shakil. Had an outer look. But Abu Jahl and Abu Lahab could not see the light of Iman. All they could see is, Ma agna anhu maluhu. Whatever he earns, whether it's money or name or fame or position, that's what they were about. The makeup of men or women in that is not their bodies, my dear beloved, but it is actually the principle they embody and they live with and they die on. And that's why Allah Al -Quran did not say Min al dhukur, abadan. He did not say among the the mu'mineen dhukur, yani plural of dhakar, yani males. He said Min al rijal. Among the believers are men. There's difference between men and males. As if there's a notion not every male is a man really. And in that, Safiya bin Abdul Muttalib fits that description of a man in a sense. Yani a person here, a man, a full human being that is not just about the outer looks and the eating and the drinking and building a nest. That's what chickens do. But a human being that, was, that stood full on principle and died on that principle. Safiya takes in the battle of, of Al Uhud, of Uhud. And, and, and the, the people are coming and trying to kill them. And she said, give me the sword. Give me, let me do it. I'll do it myself. I'll go and defend the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Min al rijal. Rijal, yani now comes from Rajul, man, the human pe me being, not males. Not every male is male. Male is male. Yani X, Y makes you something. Versus XX. Well, Allah created everyone equal. X, X and XY. Inna akramakum indallahi atqakum. In this understanding, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made us be happy by this accomplishment. What does he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do if he, in this year of sorrow where he lost the dearest and nearest? He walks to a ta'if from Mecca. Walk. 60 miles in the desert. 
he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam walks on his honorable feet to a ta'if until he reaches a ta'if a ta'if he has distant relatives sallallahu alayhi wa sallam well, Arab tribes in that region are all interrelated anyway in hopes of what? It, he wants to give them hope what do you mean give them hope? call them to see to witness al-ghayb not just to witness ma aghna anhu maluhu wa ma kasab. Not just to witness maluhu wa ma kasab, but to witness al ghayb, to witness the reality, the truth. That's what he wanted to do. So he wins, he, he goes there, and he, after he walks all the way there, gets there tired, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, obviously walking in the desert, etc. And you know, you expect basic hospitality. Normal. In the old days, anyone who walks by you, you feed them. That was just normal. You give them a drink. Normal. Even if they're your enemies. Like in the people in, Thak in at Taif, when they saw the Prophet Wasallam, they unleashed their thugs on him. And the, uh, the, pe and the children and the others to slander him and to call him names and to throw things at him and na'udhu billah stones at him and filth at him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after this long trip so he comes under a tree for ta'if sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa azwajihi wa sallam and he makes that dua that you all know al tabarani and others that narrated etc al hadith hasan inshallah fi adha al-mawqi' where the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam turns now to Allah. There's no one. He came here to give them something. After now what happened in Mecca and his, his wife, his uncle, uh, the, his companions have passed away. He comes. The struggle is real because what I'm trying to say is the happiness is with the struggle for the akhirah. Happiness is with the struggle for Allah. Happiness is not being lazy. Happiness is not just celebrating nothing. He goes and they do all these things to him. And he sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa azwajihi wa sallam. He goes into a munajah. Yani now dialogue if you want to say. Or... A one with monologue, he's talking to Allah. He says, Ya Allah, ila man takiluni. Ya Rab, to whom are you leaving me? Ila aduan yatajahamuni. You're leaving me to my enemies? Or to someone malaktahu malaktahu amri? Or to someone that you've made more powerful than me? And then he sees, he says, I seek refuge into you, Ya Allah. I seek refuge with you, Ya Allah. And then he talks and talks and talks until he ends the dua by saying, Ya Allah, illam yakun bika ghadabun alayya fala ubali. Ya Allah, so long you're not displeased with me, I do not care about the whole dunya. But Ya Rasulullah, they're throwing things at you and they're telling you things. Life is difficult. He says, "In lam yakun bika ghadabun alayya fala ubali." All of a sudden, he turns sorrow into farah, into happiness. Ya Allah, so you long, you're not displeased with me. I don't care. I am happy. So long, you're not displeased with me. I am happy. Had al farah. That's that's the kind of happiness that we want to show and talk about. The reason is today because we're so immersed in the dunya and we're trying to seek from the dunya to give us happiness. But dunya does not give happiness or permanence. It doesn't have them to give them. The one who misses something, does not have something, cannot give it. You're looking in the wrong place for these things, my beloved. But we're going deeper and deeper trying to think that maybe if we go further, we will find it. Maybe if we go farther, we will find it. Maybe if we go deeper, we will find it. And the dunya is just telling you, you're taking the wrong exit. It's not where it is. You're in the wrong address. 
And that's why we came to our deen and what we did with our deen, which is supposed to be the oasis, yani الواحة, the oasis of spirituality and breathe and being happy. Being happy with Allah, being happy with Rasulullah, وسلم, being happy with the Salihin, being happy with the good things. We came to the deen and then voided it almost entirely from any ruh and made the deen rituals with no ruh. And every ruh you make for the deen, it becomes bid'ah, shirk or kufr. With the, with the, what we have today. Wallahi, the biggest bid'ah is that you void your deen from love. Wallahi, the biggest bid'ah is that you void your deen from feeling and experiencing joy with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wallahi, the biggest bid'ah is try to think that if you pray technically, mechanically complete, you've prayed while you leave your heart aside and you don't immerse your heart in being overjoyous in the presence of Allah. Wallahi, that's the biggest bid'ah that ever befallen this ummah. Wallahi, ya ahibba, nahnu mahroomoon. Wallahi, we are mahroomeen. Mahroomeen, masakeen, we think we have everything. We are so deprived. Wallahi, deprived of basic things that people used to celebrate and be joyous about. 50, 60, 70 years ago, I'm not going to tell you farther, maybe in the 50s, many people in the Arab world or in the, in the Muslim majority communities may have been illiterate, yani could not read or write. Many, if not most people. Their dini knowledge was not much. They did not attend lectures as much as, as many as you do nowadays. Every now and every second day there's a lecture. Khair inshallah. We're going to have now an IV lecture, continuous, saline, the, 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 the lectures. We're getting more lectures, but the iman is not increasing. Still, huh? I mean, all this still, there's nothing going on. We're hemorrhaging iman. You're putting all this, you're hooking him up the whole time on more lectures and he's hemorrhaging Iman. Iman is hemorrhaging. Yaqeen is decreasing still. There's spiritual electrolyte imbalance going on. Thinking is not there. Orientation is lost. Put lectures, go. Well, if you, we, we start now incorporating more than just incorporating the heart more than just the lectures those people 50 60 70 years ago and i tell you from i'm not that old but i've seen people who have been there they did not have as many they were not exposed to as many lectures maybe in my city and my city was one of the the second largest city in syria aleppo four or five scholars in the whole city two or three not even four Like and people had ikhlas and they had mahabba. There was love. There was love for Allah. There was love for Allah. And there was love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there was sacrifice. Whatever they had, there was sacrifice. That's why they enjoyed their faith. They lived their faith. They didn't take their faith IV of information and overloaded their mind, but the heart was in a different place. It wasn't always about me, myself, and I, but it was a community thing. The guidance was born. They used to celebrate in Rabi'u al Awal, the whole month was celebration. The whole year was celebration, to be honest with you, because people were happy. They celebrated not the 12th of Rabi'u al Awal. That's a bid'ah. They celebrated the whole of Rabi'u al Awal. And after Rabi'u al Awal, they celebrated Rabi'u al Thani. And after Rabi'u, they celebrated the whole year, they were in joy and celebration of their team. They move from one station of the seerah. To another station of the seerah from the Mawlad al-Sharif 
two, they move to Al-Hijra, or two, they move to uh, uh, Al-Isra wal Mi'raj. They move from Al-Isra wal Mi'raj to Ramadan. They move from Ramadan to uh, etc. They move to, to Al-Hijra. They go through the whole year in being overjoyous with Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And therefore, their deen was not a burden. Their deen was actually more joyous. And that translates in what Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu anhu heard from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he told him, Arihna biha ya Bilal. O Bilal, call the prayer so we can enter our comfort zone. Today, call the prayer so we can get it over with. The heart is not involved. Pray all you want. Go ahead. Whoever told you love is with, through the body. Oh, I don't want your love with the body. Give me your love in the heart. One Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam points to that. Inna Allah la yanzuru ila suwarikum wa la ila ajzadikum. Hadith is a Muslim. Wa la ke yanzuru ila qulubikum. You see people were attentive to hear Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said they didn't know hadith sahih or da'if or whatever. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam they gave you their ears and their hearts. Not just their ears. No, they're listening to Al-Habib Al-Mahbub Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's words. They gave you things. Yes, give me. Tell me about Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They invented poetries and they wrote things and they got involved and they brought their children and they... It was an experience for everyone being now in the love of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Tell me, tell me as if they... Because they were... They tasted, they had some dhuq of the mahabba of Rasulullah and therefore, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and therefore they were longing for much more. Huh? Just like Ibn al-Farid, rahmatullahi alayhi, when he said, Adir dhikra man ahwa, walaw bimalami. Fa inna ahadith al-habibi mudami. He says, tell me, tell me about Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Tell me about Rasulullah, give me more. Huh? Man ahwa, the one I love, even if you're blaming me, even if it's going to expose my faults, even this, but just give me. For this, the mentioning of my beloved is my intoxication. It's where my happiness is. It's my ecstasy. Because Rasulullah is your window to the Akhirah anyway. He's your window to Al-Ghayb. He is the channel that you walk through. He is the one that takes you to the Noor. He is the one that walks you to Jannah. He is the one that waits for you at the basin, at Al Hawd. He is the one that gives you the Shafa'ah in the Day of Judgment. He is the one that says, Ana laha, Ana laha. I am for it. I will stand for it. He is the one that goes and, and does sujood and Allah says, Is sal tu'ata, washfa' tu shafa'. Ya Muhammad, ask and you shall be granted. He's the one who says, Ummati, Ummati. He's the one who sacrificed. He wasn't sitting idle. That's why we celebrate him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Shuf hadith Anas fil Bukhari. The Sahaba used to be happy for a word, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. Word, word. Not just for him, for a word, he says. When the man came, Rajul min al-Badiyah came, and he asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Qala ya Rasulullah, mata sa'a. When is the day of judgment? Maybe the man, I don't know. Maybe the man expected that the Prophet saw some tell him in uh, 2021 Gregorian. You know, every day the people come, next year will be the day of judgment. Or next year will be. Which the Prophet saw him, did not say. You say. For the Prophet وسلم, told the man and, and, and answered the man, maybe not have expected. What have you, you're asking for the day of judgment? What have you prepared for it? The man was overtaken. He said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, I did not prepare much deeds. Yani, I do my basic stuff. But I have love of Allah and love of His Rasul in my heart. He tells him, You are with those you love. Anas says, Now, the narrator of the Rawi al Hadith. The narrator of the hadith, he says, فَمَا فَرِحْنَا بِشَيْءٍ يَوْمَهَا We, the whole Sahaba, we were, ha we were not happy about anything as we were happy about one word Rasulullah said, you are with those you love. 
The Sahaba were happy for one word. And for another riwayah for Bukhari, فَفَرِحْنَا بِهِ يَوْمَ إِذَنْ بِهَا فَرَحًا شَدِيدًا We were so ecstatic about this word. About a word they heard from the Prophet ﷺ. Why? Because they had dhuq. Can't feel dhuq. Can't feel mahabba. Because mahabba brings dhuq. Those who have love have dhuq. Wallahi. Wallahi. Oh, those who don't have love have no dhuq. La wallah. Mool mahabba dhuq ya habibi. Al mahabba, al mahabba, al mahabba refines. Love refines. Love purifies. Love perfects. The words become different. The talk becomes different. The walk becomes different. وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانَ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا شوف. Left at محبة. He did not say وَعِبَادُ الْقَهَّارِ وَعِبَادُ الْجَبَّارِ وَعِبَادُ الْخَالِقِ وَعِبَادُ الْغَنِي وَعِبَادُ الْعَلِي وَعِبَادُ الْعَظِيمِ وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ and no, there are people who are filled with the mahabba of Allah and the rahmah from Allah. So even their walk is a walk of love. And their talk is a talk of love. Let me finish so I don't take this long. In today's world, where all we hear is problems, you turn the news, so and so, thousands of people, are getting killed here and there and everywhere and all these things huh? uh, yeah, just like the just like what iblis when iblis told adam alayhi salam he came to adam and told him yeah, adam should i tell you should i point you towards the the jannah the secret of permanent life Khuld. Huh? Should I tell you about democracy? Should I, can I point you to democracy and how you can be the best and how you can live in a free way? Let me tell you. Yani in other ways today, it's also happening. Qala ya Adam, you want, to, you want to live permanently, everlastingly? I, have the, I can tell you which tree, if you eat from it, you will. Hal adulluka ala shajaratil khuld? Wa mulkin la yabla. Ooh, shaitan beautifies beautifies it for you you go after it then you lose everything today we are having so many things in our lives my dear beloved brothers and sisters and a lot of things we live life and life gives you what life has among the oasis that we can we ought to cultivate is the mahabba of Allah and the mahabba of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam? But I'm not talking about words and poetry, singing, chanting. No, 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 no. Anybody can do that. Hatta al munafiq can do that. I am talking about the love that transforms, a love that generates, a love that changes, a love that accomplishes, even if nothing comes as a result. The Prophet ﷺ went to Al-Ta'if and he was tired and he was hungry and he was thirsty and he is the most honorable creation Allah Ta'ala created. And they threw every evil thing they have from words and actions at him, but he was happy. And no, none of them became believers except a servant at that point, but yet he was so happy with what Allah Ta'ala gave him. He gave him the tawfiq to actually complete the mission that he pledged to complete. Today, in this country specifically, because Muslim, American Muslims are a minority, American Muslims have a great message, a message of unity, a message of harmony, a message of love, a message of unconditional compassion, a message of cooperation, a message of tolerance, a message of enriching the other culture, cultures and, and other f segments of society. But we can't give love if we don't cultivate it. We can't give mercy if we don't have it. 
We can't call people to happiness if we don't experience happiness ourselves. And that means that we can't keep going after, redu uh, after making, reducing our deen into a set of rituals. We need to be able to cultivate, cultivate things like selflessness. Today, Metropolitan, I say, I've been saying that for some time, Metropolitan youth and many others, people who live in metro cities, don't understand what the meaning, the principle of sacrifice is. What do you mean sacrifice? Sacrifice what, man? You mean now the internet bars will be two instead of three? Or one? La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. The concept of sharing. And many of you who are immigrants, and if you came from humble backgrounds, you know from our grandparents. There was a loaf of bread and maybe a couple of things next to it. That's it. And that loaf of bread is also shared. And you all have, many of you may have seen your parents or grandparents taking the taking the bite almost from their mouth and putting it in front of you so you can eat. But there was happiness and joy. There was sharing. There was barakah. Today we grow up in a place where we have so much but we don't have much. The numbers are up but the barakah is down. The rituals are mechanically complete but the spiritual has escaped. Our young people don't understand. What, what do you mean sharing? What do you mean loyalty? What is wafa? Huh? One of my students showed me a picture of the dog of President George H.W. Bush when he passed away just a few days ago. And he showed me a picture of his dog standing right before his casket in a state of sorrow for the person the dog was serving for a cup for some time. Ajeeb. Wallahi ajeeb had al wafa. Ay wallah. Principles, maybe one of the Andalusian scholars, he said, he wrote a book called Tafdilu al Kilab ala kathirin mimman labis al thiyab. You, you can look it up, it's in, on the internet. Favoring dogs over many who wear clothes. The name of the book. It's an Andalusian scholar, known big scholar. Huh? How are we going to teach our children principles if we reduce our deen to rituals? Yalla, pray, bismillah. Okay, okay. When Mahabbatullah Ta'ala, where is the Mahabba of Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And where do we cultivate these kinds of Imaniyat like Iman, like Wafa, like Ihtiram, uh, like Mahabbatul Kabir, Al Atf Al Sagir, uh, being kind? Where, where do we respect of the elderly, respect of the seniors? Uh, where do we cultivate selflessness, Yaqi? Can we buy it from Lowe's across the street? Maybe two pounds of uh, selflessness? Ikhlas. Ay Allah. Rahim Allah, Hafiz Ibrahim. I always repeat his poetry when he said, Inni la tutribuni al khilalu karimatan. Tarab al gharibi bi awbatin wa talaqi. Ay Allah. He says, I am intoxicated by noble characters. شوف هاي النوبلتي نوبل الخلق النبيل هذا نوبل كاركترز هي سيز it makes me drunk إني لتطربني الخلال كريمة طرب الغريب بأوبة وتلاقي just like the one who has been traveled who has traveled for a long time when he comes home he's almost drunk when he sees his family and loved ones he says that's how I am when I meet people who have principles and characters like that and the human being, my dear beloved brothers, Allah says, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ Did not make us like chickens.
فالناس هذا حظه مال he says فإذا فإذا رزقت خليقة محمودة فقد اصطفاك مقسم الأرزاق he says if if you have noble characters you are chosen by Allah Allah has shown his grace on you Huh? Look at when Allah Ta'ala described his beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wa Azwaji Wa Sallam He did not say وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ عِلْمًا عَظِيمٌ وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ قِرَاءَةٍ عَظِيمًا وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ حِفْظٍ عَظِيمٌ وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ نَسَبٍ عَظِيمٌ وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ مَالٍ عَظِيمٌ وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ جَاهٍ عَظِيمٌ And all of this is true in him Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Sallam وَإِنَّمَا He said وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيم إني لا تطربني الخلال كريمة طرب الغريب بأوبة وتلاقي فإذا رزقت خليقة محمودة if you have noble characters you hold on to them and you grow them فقد اصطفاك مقسم الأرزاق the one who gives أرزاق has given you this رزق he says فالناس هذا حظه مال وذا علم وذا كمكارم الأخلاق he says some people some people's fortune in this, in this dunya is mal, money. Some people's fortune in this dunya is ilm, knowledge. And he says, and the one, the highest one, makarimul akhlaq. So to make the long story short, I think you have to be innovative. Yeah, I'm using the word innovative. In trying to cultivate atmospheres of love of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa you have to be creative and you can't just leave two, three, four, five children be part of it. You have to also be part of it. You have to lead by example. You have to bring joy about Rasulullah in your home and in your masjid. You're not spectators. You're not observers. You're participants. Observers of what? You deprive yourself. If we don't cultivate environments of love for any and everything, for a reason and without a reason, just make a reason, make up a reason and come and bring these things. I don't know what the best way is. Maybe I have an older way. Maybe some of you who have newer, innovative ways of bringing these things. Of bringing joy because there's no better joy than remembering Allah, and there's no better joy than remembering Rasulullah. Allah tells you from Quran Kareem, He doesn't tell you about the dunya, dunya is gonna always upset your heart. But what does He tell you? Here's spiritual cardiology for you. If, if you, by the remembrance of Allah, hearts find tranquility, you are at homeostasis now. Entirely, physiologically speaking. And then he says, with the salah ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when we mention Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we're making salah and salam on him. Allah tells him, salli alayhim. Ya Rasulullah, do salah. If they give salah unto you, give salah unto them as well. Inna salataka sakanun lahum. Your salah, ya Rasulullah, is second for them, is peace unto them. Have you ever seen somebody who who increases the salah ala Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hundreds of times a day, regularly, frequently. And he's filled with worries? Not possible. And if you make one salah ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you get one salah and salam from him. The salah and salam from him is second, as Allah said in the Quran, is peace and tranquility unto you onto your heart. It's salam from Rasulullah to you. So, I hope to see more of these things throughout the year. And I hope that you become more creative in making it a joyous event. I don't know what needs to happen, what, need, what you need to create, how much innovative you have to be. You've got to be innovative and live the joy of the deen, the farah of the deen. Qul bifadlillah. You ought to be happy. Wallahi, people, I remember growing up and I used to look at the faces of our shuyukh. When they hear the name of Rasulullah, they smile. When they bring a hadith, they're, they're smiling. Today, everything is...
بعدين يعني وال... بعدين معكم يعني everything is وجهنم و يا اخي في جنه also في جنه also في محبه والله غفور والله رحيم والله ودود سبحانه وتعالى the all loving we need to introduce Allah Ta'ala to people don't introduce Jahannam to people introduce Allah to the people introduce him the all loving creator the all forgiving creator the one who loves you more than you love yourself and knowing you more than you know yourself he still loves you subhanahu wa ta'ala more than you love yourself Please be as innovative as you can within the boundaries of the Sharia. To bring, to make this life, when we mention Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, it's a joyous thing. It brings peace to our hearts. Why not? Why wouldn't it? You send your salah and salam to him sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he sends his salah and salam back onto you personally from him to you. A salah that infuses your heart with tranquility, infuses your soul with ease, puts nur and light in your heart and on your face. Dr. Chohan and uh, Yusuf, they came and they met up with me in Medina. And there's some people that coincidentally met with me as well because I don't organize trips. I'm not a tourist guide. I need to go and worship myself because I am in need of worship. But we told them, everybody, no congregational thing. We meet one hour a day, the rest is in ibadah. Ya Allah, bismillah. Everybody finds a poll in the prophetic masjid from 1 p.m. till 5 a.m. You pray and then maybe we'll see you on the way. I saw them coming uh, and Lone Sab as well. I saw them in, in, uh, in Al Baqi'ah. I'm going where Ahlul Bayt were and they were coming from where the Shuhada of Harra are. I let them, that's the point. Huh? Even though they were talking, when I said, okay, Bismillah. But people want to go shopping to Al Madina. Like, Habibi, you go shopping to the mall. I'll take you to the mall. You go shopping all you want. You go to Madina, go to Rasulullah. People go to see the masjid. People go to see the pillars. People go to see the arches. People go to see the dome. People go to see the minarets. And some people go to see Rasulullah. Everybody goes for what they like and what they're veiled with, if they're veiled. We are here now. You are at Medina, but you're not at the Medina. But Medina is a glimpse of Medina, inshallah. Don't render, don't dwarf your faith into just rituals. Please find ways, be creative about them. Cultivate these principles that Rasulullah gave us selflessness, favoring others over ourselves sometimes, giving time, money, uh, smiles. You don't have time or money, give smiles. Not to give is not an option. Not in Islam. You've got to give. You don't have time? Resources. You don't have resources? Ilm. You don't have ilm? Smile. For your mere smile is an act of charity. You have to give. It's give. Not giving is not possible because when you give, you take. Those who withhold, wallahi, they withhold from themselves. Wallahi, thumma wallahi, thumma wallah. How do we cultivate these things except in this environment? Because we work 23 hours a day, so we have one hour. Okay, let's do something in it. So, my look, so long we live here and we live in a country that's very busy, we're all busy with the dunya. We have to make some time for the akhirah because dunya will eventually stop. Will stop. And what you build now for the akhirah will be with you. So, may Allah Ta'ala keep your lives filled with joy. Joy with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Joy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Joy with being amongst the believers. يعني, remember Hadith al-Tirmidhi, Allahumma inni as'aluka hubbak wa hubba man yuhibbuk. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is teaching us, Ya Allah, grant us your love. I, I, some people, let me finish with this, I know. 
Some people say, Sheikh, al hub wahbi wala kasbi. Wallahi wahbi al hub. Al hub is a gift from Allah. You can't, you can't acquire it. You either have love or you don't have love. If you are deprived from love, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam directed us to ask Allah, Ya Allah, grant me your love. Allahumma inni as'aluka hubbak. Why? Because the love is granting from Allah. You can't make yourself love. It's a gift. Ask Him to gift you the love. That's all I'm telling you. Ask Allah to grant you the gift of love if you don't have it. And if you don't have a love, you don't have a life. You need to get a life. Even if you think you have a life, you really don't. Because the life you have is perishable and it's going to stop. And love is going to take you, through, navigate you through the world and through the akhirah. That's why Allah in the Quran said, يُحِبُّهُمْ وَيُحِبُّونَ He did not say, يُحِبُّونَهُ وَيُحِبُّهُمْ He loves them and they love him. His love first. He gifts you that. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he taught us to say, اللَّهُمَّ إِنِّي أَسْأَلُكَ حُبَّكَ Ya Allah, I ask you to grant me your love. وَحُبَّ مَنْ يُحِبُّكَ And the love of those who love you. Ya Salam. Ya Salam. Ya Allah, Nabi Al-Akram, Sayyidu Al-Anbiya Wal-Mursaleen, Habibu Rabbi Al-Alameen, Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wa Sallam, is saying, Ya Allah, grant me the love of those who love you. Allow me to love those who love you. حُبُّ الصَّالِحِينَ But what happened? وَحُبُّ الْمَسَاكِينَ What happened? What happened to all that stuff? يَا أَيُّ الَّذِينَ مَنْ تَقُوا اللَّهُ وَأَكُونُوا مَعَ الصَّادِقِينَ وَتَوَفَّنَا مَعَ الْأَبْرَارِ But all these things. وَحُبَّ عَمَلٍ يُقَرِّبُنَا إِلَى حُبِّكَ And inshallah ta'ala that Allah ta'ala makes our lives in this deen filled with joy and filled with love. And filled with these infusions of the barakah, of the mahabba of Allah and the mahabba of Sayyidina Rasulullah. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi 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 w